questions. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting of the Sterling Heights City Council to order. If you would please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, please bless our elected officials. Grant them courage and wisdom to do what is right for all citizens. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ms. Riska. Can we please have the roll call? Mayor Taylor? Here. Mrs. Saraski? Here. Mrs. Koski? Present. Mr. Radke? Present. Mrs. Schmidt? Present. Mr. Yanez? Here. Mrs. Yerko? Present. Thank you, Council. We need approval of the agenda. Mr. Mayor? Mrs. Koski? Move to approve the agenda. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, our next item, our first item, is a report from our city manager. But before I get there, we do have a few extra people here today, um, likely because of the uh, ceremony we're going to have. Um, I just ask if anybody uh, is new, uh, keep your mask on to the extent you can if you need to take your mask off and want to stay in the meeting. We have a, uh, an area set up in the back behind those uh, plexiglass panels. If you're going to come up and speak at the podium, we ask uh, you, you can feel free to remove your mask if you'd like. We ask you to uh, wipe the microphone down and the podium. There are uh, wipes there for you uh, before and or after you speak. Um, and we appreciate uh, your willingness to help and cooperate in that. So with that, Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you very much, Mayor. I would like to begin with uh, highlighting a number of spring cleanup uh, activities that we have uh, forthcoming. The Sterling Heights Department of Public Works has cleanup events scheduled starting in April to help residents unclutter and organize after a long winter. Uh, for more information on any of these events uh, and activities, you can visit our website. So the first one up is Shred Day on April 10th. That will be at our DPW facility from uh, 9 a.m. until 2 p.m and residents can bring documents for no charge. Uh, they will be limited to three paper size boxes, uh, so you sort of your typical banker boxes uh, per person. And I wanna remind everyone again, this is for uh, Sterling Heights residents only. And then the second annual household hazardous waste event will be held at the DPW building on Saturday, April 17th, and that's gonna be 9 a.m. to 2 p.m and ERG Environmental will be collecting, identifying, and packaging for transport acceptable ha household hazardous waste materials. So uh, it's kind of the obvious items that you typically can't set out for regular refuse. But again, visit our website for a complete list of uh, what you can include. And then uh, Great Lakes Electronics will be at DPW facility again on Saturday, April 24th, same time, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. to accept electronics for recycling. Residents looking to get rid of old TVs, computers, or other electronic devices uh, that has an electrical cord attachment are invited to drop them off at the facility. Uh, all these events are really popular, so uh, please mark them on your calendar. And then also we're going to have our uh, regular cleanup Saturday events, and they'll be uh, May 8th and the 15th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And what that means is you can just bring items uh, that you normally don't set out for refuse, like furniture, lumber, tires, dirt, tree stumps, and, and the like to the facility, the DPW facility, that is, and uh, dump them in the dumpsters that we'll have available. Again, that's May 8th and May 15th. Uh, so a good way to uh, clean up the stuff that you've been putting off and a convenient way to uh, dispose of all of it. And speaking of uh, cleanup and sus sustainability and greening Sterling Heights, the Department of Public Works will discount its tree program in the month of May to encourage residents to purchase trees for the fall 2021 tree planting. So a list of tree choices for planting in the public right of way will be available uh, in May for $255 per tree, which is a $50 discount uh, from the regular price of $305. So 
uh, trees purchase, as I mentioned, uh, will be planted uh, the following fall, or this fall, I should say, after the first frost, so likely near the end of October or early November. Uh, so that, too, is a very popular program. We encourage you to uh, get uh, your tree purchased for the right-of-way. And also, speaking of trees, the city has once again been designated a tree city, as we have been for decades now, and the ceremony will take place, a tree planting ceremony, uh, before the next city council meeting on April 20th. And I also wanted to provide an update on the Sears vaccination site. Many of you know that the facility uh, opened last week, and so far it has been a great success. I wanted to uh, uh, commend all of our stakeholders that have been involved in making this a reality. We've been working on this project for months, and it's really nice to see it come to uh, fruition. Uh, there's been a number of uh, uh, legal documents and, and agreements and so on that our city attorney and his team had to negotiate and finalize in short order. I want to thank the mayor and the city council for their support of this really unique option and uh, doing all they could from their vantage point to get this approved and opened up in short order. And also all the departmental um, uh, representatives that have been involved in this, uh, most notably the fire department who's worked really hard in, in getting the site uh, stood up and operational. And it's working seamlessly. I checked with the fire chief today. We're uh, vaccinating about 300 people a day. Uh, we expect to go up to 1,000 in short order, and we even can exceed that. So uh, the objective is to get as many people in Sterling Heights vaccinated as quickly as possible. And that doesn't include the site across the street, the senior center. We're vaccinating a few hundred people there now almost every day. So uh, we're doing our part in Sterling Heights, and, and we're super proud of uh, that effort. And as I mentioned at the last meeting, uh, to our knowledge, we are the very first city in the state to be approved by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services to actually receive vaccines and, and administer them through our uh, fully certified and highly trained and talented paramedics. So we're super proud of uh, that factoid. Also, I wanted to um, uh, advise the City Council that a number of resolutions have been suggested by uh, Commission members, residents, and Council members involving the following topics. Uh, first, there is proposed state legislation that may prohibit uh, the City from, uh, cities across the state from providing postage on return uh, absentee ballots. Uh, this may be contrary to prior action the City Council's taken and thus would may require resolution opposing the legislation. I'm going to forward that uh, proposed legislation to City Council and uh, we'll prepare a resolution for your April 20th meeting unless there's any objection from City Council. Also, an ethnic uh, community committee member, Willie uh, Deshevez, is requesting that the City Council adopt a resolution to condemn hate crimes and derogatory hateful acts against Asian Americans. Uh, this is certainly in concert with uh, what, what we are working toward to avoid and, 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 and uh, fostering unity in the community and inclusiveness and diversity and equity and so on. So this, this really is a, a worthy um, objective by uh, the Ethnic Advisory Committee and, and we really uh, should uh, support their efforts. So unless there's any opposition, we'll prepare that resolution as well for April 20th. And, and lastly, the Armenian National Committee of Michigan is requesting on behalf of the Armenian community in Sterling Heights and other communities as well to join its commemoration of the Armenian Genocide uh, by issuing a resolution in an effort to educate others about the tragic loss of life, land, and human rights of the Armenian people. So uh, without objection, we'll uh, draft that resolution for City Council's consideration as well. And, and you would see all three of those at the April 20th meeting. As I mentioned, the resolutions are in the spirit of the city's overall diversity, equity, and inclus inclusivity objectives, not to mention the overarching goal of fostering an ever-welcoming uh, community. And lastly, I wanted to uh, drive one's attention to the mural that's on 
the screens uh, before you. And I wanted to highlight this. It's on uh, the City Council's consent agenda for approval and is part of our uh, really uh, highly successful public art program. And uh, as many of you know, public art and cultural attractions have great placemaking uh, potential as we see from, from the artworks that we now have across the city, and many of which have been around for decades on the city campus. These amenities draw people in and allow them to connect in very unique ways, breaking down uh, cultural barriers and, and the like. Almost everyone has a distinct memory of how art has impacted uh, them. Beyond simple aesthetics, well-conceived public art can also be very playful. And that's one reason I wanted to highlight this mural. Uh, this mural, it's called a Trailblazer, uh, has what will be the very first augmented reality component, not only in our city, but really in uh, southeastern Michigan, uh, outside of Detroit, that is. There, there is one augmented reality uh, mural that we're aware of in the city of Detroit, but we're not aware of any of them in the suburbs. So we're super excited about this. So what is an augmented reality component? You're asking, I'm sure. It's a component where you can download an app and actually uh, download this mural to your phone. And uh, the, the artists working with this uh, app company uh, will actually allow individuals to bring the mural to life. So when you're in front of the mural and you're taking a picture of it, various uh, parts of the mural uh, through your phone with the app, you'll actually see it come to life, which is really super cool. And we think is gonna generate a lot of attention uh, from uh, visitors and, and others in the area uh, where this is gonna go, and I'll talk about that shortly. And uh, also be a great benefit to the business that's hosting uh, this mural. So let me talk about uh, the business and that is, many of you uh, have heard of uh, Ventimiglia's at Dodge Park and just north of 15 Mile Road. And so with our mural program, uh, we invite businesses to host uh, these murals. And the benefit to the business is uh, it, it becomes a focal point. And uh, individuals, residents, visitors, and the like will come and look at the mural and more than likely uh, partake in whatever business activity it is, whether it's retail, restaurant, uh, uh, could be a, a pub or, or the like. Uh, so this is the wall. It will go on the south side of the Ventimiglia building. Now, another reason why this is uh, noteworthy is because many of you may know through COVID that we developed the Inside Out program. Uh, so businesses can move their operations outside where it's safer. And for restaurants, this makes a lot of sense. So this parking lot is going to be reconfigured some. The owner of Ventimiglia's has agreed to participate in the Inside Out program. Uh, so the area immediately adjacent to this wall will be cordoned off and become an outside courtyard area with tables and, and uh, other amenities where individuals can sit and have a sandwich from Ventimiglia's or, or uh, an iced tea or the like and enjoy the mural in and, and sort of a mini pocket quasi park. Uh, so we, we look forward to working with the business in this case. I want to highlight this because we're really hoping that other businesses across the city take advantage of this as well. Um, the benefits are obvious and we're uh, really uh, excited to get the mural done. We, we hope that the artist will have it completed uh, in July and uh, it will be marketed widely through uh, a number of uh, mediums, so including the city's social media and so on. So I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. Look forward to this uh, sprucing up this uh, vacant wall and uh, becoming a focal point in that area. And Mayor, that includes my report this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vanderpool. Next item on our agenda is a presentation. This is a presentation of the Employee and Department Office <coughs> Awards for 2020. Uh, introductions by our Community Relations Director, Melanie Davis, and Human Resources and Benefits Manager, Kate Baldwin. Ladies. Good evening, Mayor Taylor, Honorable City Council, Mr. Kashubsky, and Mr. Vanderpool. We're excited to host our employee award ceremony before you all. 
As you know, in recent years, we have celebrated and recognized our many noteworthy staff and their numerous accomplishments with a much larger employee audience. And we really miss being able to have everyone in attendance to honor their distinguished colleagues. However, we are still very thrilled to be here tonight to announce and celebrate employees receiving the 2020 Employee Recognition Awards. So we sincerely thank you for this opportunity. On the itinerary for the Employee Recognition Ceremony, we will first feature the Years of Service Awards. We'll then transition into Departmental Awards, where we will invite department directors and leaders to announce and present the honorees. We'll announce the Part-Time Employee of the Year, Outstanding Performance of the Year, Administrator of the Year, and Office slash Department of the Year. After all awards are presented and photos are taken with the honorees department director, we'll invite city council to come down from the stage and stand for a group shot with all of the honorees. With me tonight is Melanie Davis, our community relations director, who will be helping MC tonight's ceremony. Thank you, Kate. First up, let's dive into the years of service awards. Please draw your attention to your respective screens as we announce the recipients of this year's Years of Service Awards. Receiving 10 year service awards this year are Police Officer Lucas Fisher, Board of Zoning Appeals David Graff, Crossing Guard Tammy Harchuk, Police Officer Stephen Thompson, Police Officer Neil Wadafried, and Library Page Cynthia Zink. Receiving the 20 year service awards this year are Police Officer Al Archie, Police Officer John Bupre, Police Captain <coughs> Jeffrey Bonner, Parks and Rec Administrative Assistant Jacqueline Cassiopo, Plant Operator Mechanic Paul Danforth, DPW Sewer Service Cleaner Thomas Delick, Library Assistant 2 Michael Elgert, Engineering Construction Coordinator Adam LeClaire, Police Officer <coughs> Douglas Livier, Police Sergeant Guy Lynn, Police Officer Maureen Murphy, Board of Review Betty Jane Sukar, Chief Deputy Court Clerk Julie Trombley, Police Officer Michael Vos, and Fire Captain Mark Wellhausen. Receiving 25 year service awards this year are Fire Marshal Sean Allen, Fire Battalion Chief Tim Bade, Crossing Guard Florence Bell, Fire Battalion Chief Mark Dougherty, Fire Captain Jeffrey Duncan, Police Lieutenant David Guerra, Police Officer Eric Job, Police Administrative Secretary Virginia Konachek, Police Officer Michael Kunith, Police Officer Tricia Latour, Fire Inspector Michael Solomon, Police Officer Darren Steele, Police Officer Todd Trozak, Crossing Guard Raymond Washburn, and Fire Lieutenant Charles Wassel. And receiving the 30 year service awards this year are Appraiser 3, Sean Biernat, Deputy Court Clerk, Michelle Jodas, and Budget Management Coordin Coordinator, excuse me, Janice Schoenrath. Let's give these years of service recipients a warm round of applause for their dedication and commitment to Thank you. Now we move on to the departmental awards. For the first departmental award, we invite Tammy Turgeon, our public library director, to come and announce the recipient of the 2020 Sterling Heights Public Library Departmental Award. Thank you, uh, Mayor Taylor, members of City Council, Mr. Vanderpool, Mr. Kaczynski. I'm here tonight to present the award uh, for the library, 2020 Library Employee of the Year to Jason Groth. Jason Groth has been a staff member at the library for over 11 and a half years, with six and a half years of that time as the library's public relations and programs coordinator. Jason really stepped up when the pandemic hit. He worked with our librarians to develop online programming this involved assisting staff with recording programs, editing and producing programs, as well as promoting them in this new environment. 
When we were able to have limited in-person services, he organized outdoor programs as well as curbside craft programs. Jason made sure that our staff and the city's residents were kept informed regarding the library's services through Facebook, the city magazine, and curbside delivery flyers. He also assisted me whenever asked. Jason is a true professional with regard to his interactions with the public, both in person and online. He is flexible and quick to pivot to meet the needs of a situation. He also has a great working relationship with his coworkers as well as other city department staff. We're lucky to have him working for us. Congratulations, Jason, on being named the 2020 Library Employee of the Year. Now we'd like to invite Michael Moore, our Department of Public Works Director, to announce the recipients of the DPW's Departmental Awards for 2020. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, Anne Nicole. Anne is in early every day with a smile. Since 2013, Anne has been reading water meters throughout the city logging millions of steps and hundreds of miles. Anne works in the rain, the freezing cold, and the heat without ever complaining. Anne has really taken the meter reading program to a new level and set the expectations really high for all the employees that she trains. She has set the record for the amount of meters read per day, and then crushed that record, and then reset the record, and then crushed that record, and then reset that record too. <laughs> Genuinely a nice person. She's a great mom with great kids with one heck of a work ethic. She is also volunteering at the vaccination center currently. And I speak for Jim, I speak for the rest of the supervisors. We truly appreciate the tough job that you do day in and day out and make it look so easy. Thank you, Ann. Technical difficulty. <laughs> okay. Paul Danforth. Wow. Paul, where do I begin? My goodness. I'm not even sure really where to begin, to be quite honest, not even trying to be funny, being, being very frank. Paul Danforth, DPW full-time employee of the year. As with previous, well, that's not Paul. As with previous DPW employees of the year, mm -hmm. Paul is the model employee. For 20 years, Paul has been an extremely reliable source for our department to lean on. And that's what we've done. We've leaned on Paul's knowledge, his experience, and level-headedness probably more than he knows and more than he realizes. We call Paul on his day off. We call Paul during training. And we even called Paul during his family trip to Disney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what? He answered the phone every time, and he still does. He's happy to help without hesitation, even if he's standing in line at Disney with his kids. I think that says a lot about a person. Paul's a leader in his division, the sewer division. He's also a leader 
and the DPW, so much in fact that he's been the steward for five years there. Anytime I arrive on a job site, Paul can be found doing the toughest, most complicated or dirtiest job. True? It's true. He has a career of teaching others how to perform their job and how to accomplish it safer and more efficient. Very admirable. Paul, our entire team appreciates you as a person and everything you've done, not only for the community, but also to help all of us out throughout the years. Jokingly, I think one day, Paul, we're going to twist your arm enough so that you do apply for a supervisor position. We'll see. Hey, but seriously, Paul, thank you honestly and for simply just being a good guy. I mean that. And thanks for being a great colleague to work with throughout my entire career. Paul Danforth. Next up, we have Fire Chief Kevin Edmond and Assistant Fire Chief Ed Miller, who will announce this year's award recipient for the fire department. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council, City Manager. I'd like to introduce Michael Amarino. Um, I've known Mike for a short time now. His collaborative nature is constantly on display in his role as a fire captain and as a union leader, and it's made my transition as fire chief easier. Mike's leadership ability constantly comes through in every meeting and every task he's given. His leadership in the department is greatly appreciated. At this point in time, I'd like to have Assistant Chief Miller say some words. Every year we have a hard time finding somebody that uh, really shines above everybody else because at the fire department everybody really strives to do their best. But Mike did that. He helped us with the COVID uh, testing, vaccination, setting up protocols within the department that was used throughout the city. So he really took that added responsibility very seriously. We often talk about leaving something better than when we get it. And she, Mike is in the position of a training officer, and things are pretty good in the training division. We thought things were pretty hard to top, but he did. And he continues to do that on top of all of his other duties. He doesn't uh, shy away from any tasks we give him. So this year, with all of his help, with his knowledge as being a registered nurse on top of being a firefighter paramedic, he really helped us out as a fire department and the city as well. So that's why we chose Michael Amarmino for Firefighter of the Year. Chiefs. Next up is Police Chief Dale Dwojakowski to announce the recipients of the awards for the Police Department in 2020. Mayor Taylor, members of Council, Mr. Vanderpool. It's my honor tonight to talk about our Command Officer of the Year, Sergeant Chad Finkbeiner. Um, again, this is a universal decision in our place. You know, we have multiple ranks in our, our department. Chad and I share a little bit of a heritage. We both played football at Wayne State University. Um, Chad was an offensive lineman and a tight end. I was an offensive center. Uh, he came on about five years after I did. Uh, but I believe, and I know it's, if, for me, myself personally, the uh, career of athletics and playing at the, the college level 
is exactly what Chad brings to the job every single day. At the shift level, he's on the road right now, um, and he works our midnight shift, and these young officers look up to him. And he's a dad, he's a mentor, he's a coach. He does all those things that those young guys love. And when there's a really messy scene that is crazy, people need to go to jail, um, evidence needs to be collected. When Chad shows up, everyone is relieved. Um, there's, there's coaching, there's pats on the back. He makes sure everything is buttoned up. He did a long time in our detective bureau, so he knows the job after the arrest is made, what needs to happen at the court level. So Chad is, we're so excited to have him back on the road. A lot of times you get so specialized in what you do in a bureau, but then for him to come back out with all of this knowledge on the road in that midnight shift that we have, almost all officers with less than five years on the job. So to have someone like this, a senior veteran officer, fantastic, and Chad is one of the nicest humans um, you'll ever meet, kind person, and couldn't ask anything more. And with that, I believe we have a video from Chad, who's down in Florida, by the way. Appreciate the invitation to come to the meeting today. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm out of town uh, vacation. Um, it's an honor to be here. Um, it's an honor to receive this award, um, especially this year during uh, COVID, it was a hard year for uh, to be a citizen, but it was a difficult year to be a police officer with everything going on in society and with uh, with COVID. So this award means means a lot to me. Um, in order to win an award like this, um, you have to be nominated by somebody. So I, I'm very grateful to, to have been nominated and for the board to have picked me. Uh, I work with a lot of great officers and uh, work for a great community. So an award like this means uh, means a lot to me. Or I can take it home and uh, show my children that uh, this hard year being a police officer uh, was worth it. Um, so I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, Mr. Vanderpool, uh, Mayor Taylor, and City Council for, for this invitation and uh, all your support that you give uh, all of us officers. Thank you. <clears throat> hey, moving on to our detective of the year. This is a brand new category for us. Detectives do such a unique job, right? They don't wear a police uniform. They take over after the scene, the arrest is made, that evidence is collected. A detective now has to follow up with that case. We have to get warrants authorized. We have to preserve evidence and we have to show up at court and we have to win the case. This is done by detectives. And there is uh, the last five or 10 years, um, what's happened in law enforcement is every single case that we have involves a cell phone, a laptop computer, some kind of electronic device, every single case, and every single phone has to be cracked. And as we learn how to get into a phone to get that evidence, Apple and other consumer vendors close those doors, make it almost impossible for law enforcement to get data off of phones, people that have shot people, stabbed people, committed horrendous crimes, and we have phones and computers to download. This job has become very, very difficult, the electronic part of the job. And what Detective St. Ange is, is he is our computer forensics guy. He's got his own lab in our new building that's almost done. He's got a really sweet state-of-the-art computer lab that's almost ready to open. So I know Tim's excited to get over there. So Tim has went through hundreds of hours of training. He's a certified computer forensics examiner. He has servers and download devices and different encryption, uh, uh, decryption devices. He's got phones plugged in all the way down the side of his wall. He has to go to the county for some of their tool sets. Um, we've, we've had some homicides in the past where Tim had to work on multiple phones going through thousands of GPS locations and download data, working with our federal partners, state partners, other detectives. These cases get so complicated, thousands of pages of returns, digital data returns, and someone has to translate the digital into what does that mean? Is this guy guilty or not? This is what Tim does. He's in his office often late at, late at night. Um, and he does an unbelievable job, unbelievable with the computers. And on a side note, the, Tim's a great dad. Um, he's got two boys. Uh, he does likes to use his tractor. He has a little tractor company, and he grades driveways and plows. So he is a uh, Renaissance man. He's got this sweet pole barn, and he, he's always dabbling in something, fixing something, um, in farming, in chickens. He does it all. Uh, so with that, it's my honor to um, nominate or uh, announce Detective of the Year, Detective Timothy St. Ange. Tim?
<clears throat> okay, our Police Department Civilian of the Year uh, is Bill Cox from G4S Security. Uh, years back, we privatized our jail services and we hired a company called G4S. And a lot of times you don't know what you're gonna get with a contract security company. Um, and G4S has been pretty good and took over that jail operations pretty fluidly uh, with no issues. Now, as time has went on, um, it's been a little bit more difficult, video arraignments and bookings. Um, and this is Bill's job. Bill is the manager of our account. Bill works day shift and he works Monday through Friday. He's additional to the staff that we have in the jail. So Bill is the guy that makes sure the schedule's filled out. Bill's the guy that makes sure that we have the right officers working in that jail. Bill's the guy to make sure our arraignments are done on time. Bill's the guy that handles issues with the court every single day and all those phone calls. That's Bill. Bill's the guy that deals with issues with contraband in the jail. People have you know, tried to commit suicide in their jail over the years. This is Bill. He does it, makes sure reports are written, that stuff is documented, employees are held accountable if there's something that happens. Um, we couldn't be any happier uh, that Bill is assigned to our account. We're very fortunate to have him. When I saw his name as a nominee, I said, absolutely. The guy's very professional, does his job. We're very thankful. And with that, our civilian employee of the year, Bill Cox. Last up for our departmental awards, we invite Judge Anne-Marie Lepore from the 41A District Court to come and announce the recipients of the 41A District Court Departmental Awards. Hello everyone, Mayor Taylor, members of the City Council, Mr. Vanderpool, Mr. Kazbutski, it's a pleasure to be here with this evening with you all. First up for the Court Part-Time Employee of the Year is Kim Komarzik. Kim started back in the summer of 2019. Unfortunately, Kim could not be here today, but she works in the civil division of the court. She's a fantastic employee. She's a very diligent worker, especially over the past year with the civil division being shut down. You can imagine the amount of paperwork that she has to go through. And she has stepped up to the challenge at every turn. She's a wonderful person to work with. So um, are you giving me a word? So, round of applause for Kim. <laughs> Next up, we have Ashley Austin for the full-time employee of the year. Is that, where's Ashley? Ashley works in the criminal division of the court. Ashley is the go-to employee. Um, every time Ashley is given a task, if she doesn't know how to do it, she figures out how to do it. She is a joy to work with. She goes over things meticulously. I so enjoyed working with her. She's such a hard worker. Um, and I know that on behalf of myself and all the judges and the court administration, we are so thrilled that you received this. It's such a well-deserved honor. Thank you, Judge Lepore, and thank you to all of our department directors for being here to present your awards tonight. One more congratulations to all of our departmental award recipients this evening. For the last segment of our employee awards ceremony, we move on to the recognition mm -hmm. awards. It's important to note that each of these award recipients were nominated by their coworkers and friends. These individuals have proven to add value to the organization and city operations through their merit, hard work, and dedication. Let's invite up Kyle Langloy to present and announce the part-time employee of the year. Thank you, Kate. Good evening, Mayor Taylor, members of council, and all gathered here this evening. 
Um, it's no secret that the Parks and Recreation Department employs well over 100 part-time employees annually, filling critical support roles to serve the residents of our city. While all are instrumental to our operation, we are fortunate to have many that go way above and beyond, which is exactly what makes this year's part-time employee of the year, Julie Sarcona, so special. While she has only been with us for just over a year, she started when we opened this great building. She has always recognized the need to be flexible and has voluntarily stepped up on various occasions to help out. Major contributions have included creating a photography from home video at the start of the pandemic, helping to train and work with ice rink staff on new procedures related to registration software, stepping up to be part of the Parks and Recreation Department's initiative to staff two election precincts last November, and playing a major role in providing lists of residents desiring a COVID vaccination to the fire department and the county. For all of this and so much more, we are proud to have Julie on our team and grateful that she was recognized as this year's very deserving part-time employee of the year. I just want to say thank you to the city of Sterling Heights and to Kyle and to Bobby for nominating me for this. Um, I'm a mom who actually, uh, before I started working here a year ago, was with my kids for the last 12 years. And so I feel very proud to have, um, stand here before you and before my family um, and show them that mom can do other things too, which is really <laughs> cool. Um, and I just want to say thank you for the support of my husband and my kids, Dawson, Violet, and Sawyer. So. Um, it's been an honor working for this department, and I'm, I feel very lucky to be a part of the Parks and Rec Department. So thank you very much. Okay, and next up, Melanie Riska will present and announce the award recipient for Outstanding Performance of the Year. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Mr. Vanderpool, and members of the audience. I'm here this evening to present the Outstanding Performance of the Year Award. I want to start by giving my incredible team in the clerk's office honorary mention. Um, Carol Francis, Andrea Barra, Valerie England and Jordan Scott and all the temporary team members went through extraordinary measures um, to ensure that the historic 2020 presidential election was conducted with the utmost professionalism and dedication to the voters of Sterling Heights. I'm extremely proud of their perseverance and achievements in the face of a pandemic while serving hundreds of voters daily. But one team member stood out above the rest and that is Judy McHale, our clerk coordinator. Judy came to the city in February of 2018 and she loved the city so much that she and her husband, Bob, recently relocated to Sterling Heights in um, early 2020. It's most likely because she kind of considered that she was going to be working a lot of long hours during the election. So she really didn't want that long drive back and forth to Gross Point Woods. Um, but Judy is the rock that so many of us in our department lean on. She keeps us grounded and has taken me off the proverbial ledge more times than I care to admit. Um, she's extremely knowledgeable, hardworking, dedicated, trustworthy, and always goes above and beyond. She frequently keeps me on task and brings forth new ideas and streamlines procedures and enhances to enhance the services we provide, which makes all of our lives a lot easier. She often reminds us of our team motto, coined by the late Nelson Mandela, it always seems impossible until it's done. When faced with a daunting task, and that seemed to be way too overwhelming. She reminds us that we can't look at the whole picture, but rather we just have to tackle one task at a time until the project is done. In 2020, during the shutdown, um, she and because she lives so close now, Judy volunteered to be the one to come into the office every day to take care of mail, take care of death certificates, and any other um, in-person office functions that we needed. And I'm sure at that point, she probably regretted moving so close to City Hall. <laughs> um, during the election, when the team was scrambling uh, to keep up with the demands of voters, and I was on the front lines with the media and the Bureau of Elections, and my attention was being drawn elsewhere, 
uh, Judy tackled the recruiting, the staffing, scheduling, managing of the election center, as well as our Clinton River elections location, all while maintaining her, her daily job responsibilities, you know, records and FOIAs and, and those sorts of things. Um, so she handled her really heavy workload with impressive poise, and um, she never complained. So she consistently asked me about my vision for the department, and does it doesn't matter how crazy or outlandish or how radical it seems to be, she figures out a way to just get that list of tasks and just get stuff done. Um, so she's an inspiration to the other members of our department. Um, she's very level-headed, and she's the go-to part person that we've all come to depend on. So she's an extremely valuable and loyal member of our team and the Sterling Heights team overall. Um, she demonstrates her worthiness of this award on a daily basis. So it is, um, Judy's one of my most trusted confidants and friends, and it is my honor to present her with the 2020 Outstanding Performance of the Year Award. I just want to say um, thank you to all of you and to Melanie. It's been a pleasure uh, the last three years working here. Um, my husband and I love Sterling Heights. Um, he just said the other day he's so happy that we made the move here. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience working here as well, a wonderful people to work with. And um, thank you very much. And we invite Kyle Langloy back up to the podium to present and announce the full-time employee of the year. Thank you again, Kate, and uh, good evening again, Mayor Taylor, members of council, and everybody here. It is my honor to be here this evening to share a little bit about Kristen Briggs, why she is so deserving of employee of the year. First, it's her unwavering care for her job, her coworkers, and the residents that call Sterling Heights home. Kristen is selfless, thoughtful, dedicated, and goes the extra mile to make people feel special and important. <clears throat> it's also not uncommon for Kristen to be at work after hours and on weekends, sacrificing her personal life for the benefit of our community. Coincidentally, that may be why we get along so well, but her husband Chris is here, so Chris, I apologize for that. <laughs> I would also like to commend Kristen for her continued effort in successfully aligning the Senior Center with general parks and recreation operations, conveying consistent policies, branding, and messaging, which has strengthened our department and helped build our scope of service to one of the most emulated in Macomb County and around the state. Next is her creativity. Kristen has never met a challenge she wouldn't accept. And it is amazing to see what she can pull together with the number of general items that most of us would throw away on a day-to-day -day basis. Her vision for cute and crafty decorations, which are present at every event, help us to provide memorable moments for our participants each and every year while also staying on budget. Lastly, maybe the icing on the cake, Kristen has been an instrumental piece to our department, navigating one of the most challenging years of our careers. Her commitment to mitigating COVID-19 with transportation and 50 plus programs looking out for our 50 plus population's mental and physical well-being, and playing a key role in hosting and staffing the vaccine clinic at the Senior Center, has been a shining beacon of leadership within our department, the organization, and with colleagues, again, across the state of Michigan. It is for all of these reasons, and many, many more, we don't have time to go over all of them today. But I am lucky to work alongside Kristen each and every day. I'm proud to have her recognized as the city's full-time employee of the year. I 
I just want to say thank you very much um, for my wonderful team for nominating me um, and for being picked for this wonderful honor. Um, I really couldn't do it without them. They never waver at my crazy ideas that I come up with. And when I am less than shining, they always pull me through. So I appreciate them because I couldn't be here without them. I also couldn't be out here without my family, especially my husband. Like Kyle said, there's been many a nights that he's had to cook dinner and be dad and mom. So thank you. Thank you very much. I'm honored. And the next award is for Administrator of the Year, and we invite Mr. Vanderpool to present and announce the recipient. Thank you very much, Kate. I'm super honored to present this award every year. As you've seen from uh, all the awards uh, this evening, uh, the individuals have to be nominated by a coworker. And in this particular case, uh, for Administrator of the Year, which is going to be going to Sean Allen, I became very suspicious uh, when I read through all the applications and noticed that uh, he had many nominations. In fact, I, I requested an investigation be launched uh, because I figured some of these came from his mother, uh, maybe spouse, or other family members. But it turns out, no, they're all from his colleagues. So uh, let me just take a minute to uh, highlight uh, some of the actual narrative uh, that came from his colleagues because I think it really captures uh, Sean's work ethic, his character, and his devotion uh, to his job as fire marshal. So let me begin with uh, the first nomination. And the individual says that Sean is an excellent leader and strives for his team to always perform their best. He is passionate about his job and is always coming up with ideas and ways he can improve our division. In 2020, he worked tirelessly with his staff daily to help enforce the COVID guidelines during the pandemic for businesses uh, that perhaps were not complying uh, with some of the state orders. He and his inspectors visited multiple businesses each day to ensure, and if needed, educate businesses on the correct protocol for COVID safety guidelines. Sean spent a lot of time doing this. He also worked to get new programs implemented within the department, including the much needed online in-field inspection program called Mobile Eyes. Uh, so this uh, not only streamlined operations in the division, but uh, uh, certainly improved uh, uh, efficiencies as well. And he also worked on obtaining a fire extinguisher simulator program to help educate local businesses on proper training in the event of emergencies. He continues to help enforce fire life safety guidelines for, unfortunately, illegal marijuana grow operations in the city. And this is a problem across the state ever since uh, marijuana has been legalized. But uh, Sean and his team are doing a really good job getting ahead of this. Uh, these are just a few of the examples of Sean being a real go-getter. And another nomination uh, states that this past year was unprecedented. And with that, we had to have some unrivaled leadership within our division to give us guidance along with the businesses and citizens we serve. Within the short time of being promoted to fire marshal, Sean Allen was given direction on numerous concerns that have arisen. With input from the division, the city has tackled many situations, also including some of the uh, safe home uh, issues that we have to deal with, uh, often involving uh, hoarding cases and the like, which is also very prevalent in major metropolitan areas across the country. While confronting uh, these fire code issues, Fire Marshal Allen also tackled the issues of updating and enhancing how inspections are being performed and transitioning to tablets and fire inspection software. And lastly, I can tell you there's not another person with his work ethic, integrity, and determination to make the city of Sterling Heights one of the safest cities in the state. Uh, so 
I can say from my personal vantage point, working with Sean over the past year and for a number of months, uh, uh, working hand in hand almost daily, including uh, uh, weekends, uh, dealing with uh, so many issues that arose during COVID, uh, Sean's uh, first and foremost concern was always the safety of the community and safety of businesses and the employees that worked in the businesses. And his dedication and commitment really is uh, most commendable. And so I'm super uh, pleased and proud to be able to present Sean Allen, a fire marshal for the Sterling Heights Fire Department, the Administrator of the Year Award. off this year's employee award ceremony, Mr. Vanderpool will also be announcing the 2020 office slash department of the year. It's always really difficult to come up uh, with an individual department or office uh, to recognize every year. And uh, certainly this has been no exception. I'm pleased to present the final award recognizing the department of the year. On March 16th, 2020, the city, along with the rest of the world, began a year-long journey filled with action and events no one could have ever imagined on March 15th. The city of Sterling Heights rose to the occasion and never looked back. I want to take a couple of minutes to highlight just a sampling of the unbelievable accomplishments over the past year. <clears throat> First, as I mentioned, the city of Sterling Heights uh, was the first city in the county to declare an emergency due to the COVID pandemic on Thursday, March 13th, 2020. The city developed a comprehensive reopening plan shortly thereafter to provide in-person services after the stay-at-home order was lifted. We're one of the first city halls in the region to reopen because of this plan and make sure that the good work of local government could continue during this crisis. The city had regular meetings with federal, state, and county officials to coordinate COVID-19 prevention measures. And I'm so glad to see Senator uh, Michael McDonald here tonight. Uh, he's an example of a legislator that we had to work with oftentimes when uh, residents uh, could not get unemployment claims processed quickly enough through the state. And Senator McDonald and his team were a big help. The city developed a comprehensive website, which has served as a clearinghouse for information for residents and businesses throughout the crisis. Numerous community-wide mask-up PSAs ran throughout the city, school districts, Chaldean Community Foundation, and, and other organizations. Direct mail mask-up information was sent to areas of the city with high COVID-19 concentrations. And we were able to identify some of those concentrations, believe it or not, by testing sewage samples across the city at six uh, major uh, collection points. Uh, which actually proved to be very valuable data for the city and, and the county. 
We worked with hundreds of businesses to ensure they were in compliance with the state orders, as I mentioned earlier. We developed the Inside Out program to keep businesses and patrons safe while also uh, allowing businesses to continue operating. We secured ample uh, personal protection equipment for our employees and also the community at large by way of 250,000 masks that were donated by Ford Motor Company and FCA in the city of Sterling Heights. We collaborated with healthcare leaders regularly. We monitor data daily. We moved the city council meetings to a more safe location right here so that we could continue to meet in person and again, conduct the very important business of, of local government. We developed a volunteer corps to assist seniors. 150 employees were provided state-of-the-art equipment to work remotely from home on a rotating schedule. We monitored all 27 senior living facilities and helped ensure they received not only uh, COVID testing uh, regular, but actually vaccines as well, most recently. We coordinated and hosted numerous community-wide testing events. The Mayor and City Council have made direct appeals to the community, emphasizing the precautions that had to be followed throughout the crisis by businesses and residents to remain safe. The City Health Clinic, located in City Hall, staffed with a fully certified doctor, nurse, and related support personnel, provided health services to city personnel, included COVID testing throughout the crisis. And in addition to uh, all the challenges and, and endless activities, there were some silver linings that came out of the, the dark clouds. We developed the at-home city service program so residents didn't have to leave their home to conduct city business. They could do it right from their family room or kitchen uh, through their internet connections. We conducted inspections virtually uh, that we, so that homes would not be held up for sale and that home additions and new construction and so on could continue without delay. The city in conjunction with the county helped distribute over $6 million to businesses to ensure they could remain open and operating in a safe manner. The city provided financial relief to residents that were not able to pay their water bills due to financial hardship and we're continuing hardship relief efforts. Best of all, the city became the first city in the state without a certified health department, that is, to receive approval to receive and administer vaccines. We celebrated the opening of the city's drive-through vaccination center just last week. As if the challenges of the pandemic were not enough, this city completed significant projects unrelated to the crisis including one, achieving one of the highest census 2020 completion rates in the country. There is one, only one other city in the country in our population category that edged us out, and that was Centennial, Colorado. But we'll take second place. And what an amazing accomplishment. In the midst of a crisis, completing major renovations to the city campus facilities, including the court, the library, the police station, city hall, not to mention conducting an, or constructing a new a Department of Public Works building. All this was ongoing and coordinated during the COVID crisis. Over $25 million was expended in 2020 in various roadway and infrastructure improvements, again, during this crisis. The city development team helped facilitate significant development projects involving uh, FCA, now Stellantis, new hotels, restaurants, and of course, continued focus on Lakeside Mall redevelopment. And it's nice to see the general manager, Jerry Weller, in the audience tonight. He's been a great partner. In the spirit of diversity, equity, and inclusion, the city established the African American Coalition and the Community Alliance, again, during this time of crisis. Through it all, the city remained one of the safest communities in the country, not only from a policing perspective, but from a fire perspective, and also from this pandemic crisis perspective. To say the least, the last year was extraordinary, and extraordinary is a gross understatement. The city of Sterling Heights uh, uh, certainly prevailed. As Henry Ford once said, if everyone is moving together, 
success takes care of itself. <clears throat> we all moved together over the past year, laser focused on doing what was best for the community and the organization. We did all that we could to ensure businesses stayed open, employees were safe, local government services continued, residents were safe, and lives were saved with accelerated vaccine distribution by city paramedics and established partners. Success is the end result. With this extraordinary year in mind, the final award goes to the organization as a whole for an unprecedented display of teamwork. The collage on the screen before you represents every employee in the organization, part-time, full-time, the mayor and city council, all directors, managers, and the like. This collage uh, will be blown up and hung in the lobby uh, just outside of this room where thousands of residents will be able to see the good work of this team effort over the next year. So please join me in standing for a round of applause to salute this championship team. Thank you. As we conclude, we would like to thank you, Mayor Taylor, members of council, Mr. Kaszubski, for your time and your continued support. I would also like to thank the community relations team each and every year for making this event a success and a lot of fun. Thank you, Melanie, to your entire team for all of their hard work that they put into this event. Thank you so much, Kate. Congratulations once again to all of the award recipients tonight. And if, at this time, if we could get members of council to join us down front, we'd like to take a group photo with all of the award recipients and their department heads, and that will conclude tonight's presentation. Thank you. Okay, um, I am going to just one more time say congratulations to everyone. We'll take about a five to 10 minute recess to let people clear out. So we'll stand in recess for five or 10 minutes. Congratulations to everyone. That's a great idea.
<laughs> we have, um, I believe we have a resolution. Unfortunately, most of the people have left. Uh, but we do have a suggested action here, and that is uh, to congratulate the employees. Is there anyone who'd like to take that for us? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Yanez. A resulting congratulate. Let me try this again. Resolve to congratulate and thank all the employees recognized for years of service and awarded for outstanding performance in 2020. Support. It's been moved and supported. Council, any discussion? Mm -hmm. If not, uh, I'll just very briefly echo those comments um, that Mr. Vanderpool laid it out pretty well, so there's not much more I can say, but uh, we really do appreciate, I know on behalf of the entire city council, and the 130 some thousand residents who live in the city of Sterling Heights, all of the sacrifices that were made by our employees this year, they really did a fantastic job. It was under um, really unprecedented circumstances that nobody could have thought of. And I wanna thank all of our residents as well for uh, your patience and uh, your understanding with our staff as we went through changes that you could have never expected. I know every single resident of our city was faced with the same challenge in their own personal lives. And so I think that helped um, helped all of us get through it. And so uh, we really um, have a lot to be proud of over this last year. And uh, certainly our, our city employees are a major part of that. So um, with that being said, council, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Move on to the next item on our agenda tonight, which is the consent agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on any item on the consent agenda? <clears throat> Mayor, Council, Mr. Vanderpool, uh, in going over the consent agenda, uh, I noticed a budget amendment for a million dollars. And that million dollars is around the cost involved in the Lakeside Vaccine Center. Um, I think for the purpose of transparency, this shouldn't have ended up on a consent agenda. It's a million dollars, it's a budget amendment, and I, I believe we were not gonna have any income from, the, uh, from this until after, probably in the next fiscal year. Um, so items, <clears throat> items O, P, and S, I believe should be explained to the public all the good that's happening with us giving uh, the vaccines, there's a couple things here. We're gonna be medical billing, people with insurance to get the vaccine. I think that needs to be explained. Uh, the billing, Red House Medical Billing, I need to know if that's the same billing company that's doing the ambulance billing for the city of Sterling Heights. I see we're hiring Kelly uh, services people to do other items. This, this is a lot of money. And even in your executive summary, you're showing that uh, you're showing that the county, the medical billing and FEMA will be our sources to get the income. We don't know if we're gonna get all that back. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of questions I want. I don't think this should have been on the consent agenda. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Anyone else on the consent agenda? If not, council, we need a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Koski. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. Been moved and supported with no discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is consideration item, and this is to consider appointments to City of Sterling Heights boards and commissions. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this item? If not, council, we have two commissions. Uh, the first is an appointment, step two in the two-step process for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Is there anyone who'd like to take that action? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. Resolve to appoint Stephanie Jackson to the Zoning Board of Appeals alternate to a term ending June 30th, 2023. So is the appointing meeting the qualification set forth in Charter Subsection 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks? Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? 
Mr. Thank, Radke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mrs. Jackson uh, expressed uh, that she wanted to be on the ZBA. She previously had served on East Point ZBA before she moved to Sterling Heights. I think she'll make a great alternate and will improve that board. Thank you, Mr. Radke. Council, anyone else? With no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the Arts Commission. This is a city council appointment. There are two open seats. Partial terms ending June 30, 2021 and June 30, 2024. Councilor, is there anyone with council? Is there anyone with an appointment to the Arts Commission? Going once, twice, okay. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Koski. <clears throat> Bear with me here so I can find the motion. to appoint Diane Acavelli to, I think that's the correct city. Acavetti. to the Arts Commission to a term ending June 30th, 2021, subject to the appointee meeting the qualifications set forth in Charter 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. There is one more appointment to the Arts Commission. Council, is there anyone who'd like to make that appointment? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. Resolved to appoint Sherry Marwady to the Arts Commission to a term ending June 30th, 2024. This is the appointing me in the qualifications set forth in Charter Subsection 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, that concludes that portion of our agenda. We'll move on to communications from citizens. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on any item not on tonight's agenda? Mr. Nelson. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. Um, here's another item, transparency. It's pay raise that in two days becomes effective for the council and the mayor. And the process that we go through every two years to determine what our elected officials are going to be paid. Um, I take it because there were no actions that you are not going to reject the certificate of determination and you're going to accept fact that these positions, the city council positions, are going to increase in January by over 60 percent. And the mayor's is going to go up 75 percent. Now, in reading the minutes, the unapproved minutes of the election, uh, elected officials compensation commission, uh, which, by the way, I have to thank Melanie for uh, putting out the unofficial. The only way that this happens, they have their meeting two years later. They approve their minutes, and that's when they were getting on the, on the website. Um, may all think that you do work in order to do that, but even looking at the first meeting, it was comparisons to other communities. We compare ourselves, we compare city managers' pay, we compare council's pay, we compare mayor's pay to other cities. Sterling Heights has never been other cities. We have a job to do, and that's how we should look at what you're paid. Um, this was an equity. And what did they use? They used Southfield. Okay, Southfield, they meet every week. They have workshops on off weeks in their city council meetings. The time that they're putting in, I quote from the first meeting, the February 24th meeting of the commission, that Mayor Taylor works 30 to 35 hours a week on this job. If you're working that kind of hours, then you're pulling some of the duties from the city manager. I'm sorry, I was in this position. 
on counsel. So do the right thing. This is too much. 75%, 60% is way too much. If you would have taken half of that, I would understand, but not the full amount. So you have two days left out of the 30 to reject have your resolution to reject the certificate of determination. And I just want everybody out there to know that this was another untransparent action. Okay? Thank you very much. Anyone else under communications from citizens? Mm -hmm. Hi, Brandy Wright, resident. Um, first, I want to say I saw the announcement before the meeting earlier for the break free blast. Um, and my family and I are very excited to finally get out there and do some things in the community in person. So I appreciate that. Um, also, there's been a lot of talk online between the residents. I know Mr. Raggy had proposed looking into having backyard chickens at some point for the residents. Um, I was just wondering what was going on with that. A number of communities in our area do allow for backyard poultry, um, including Ann Arbor, which I know we like to uh, compare ourselves to. So um, if they can do it, why can't we? Um, and you can easily charge for a permit fee so the city will know who <coughs> chickens and can go around and make sure we're following the rules. Also, what was brought up was marijuana dispensaries. I know it's not really a topic that people want to discuss in an election year, but um, I think if you wait for the citizens to get a petition together and sign it to get a proposal on the ballot, you're going to lose some control of that. So I think that's something we should be looking into. Um, additionally, the changes in formulating the water bills. While I do like taking the winter sewage fee, um, it looks like there's also going to be an increase of 7% annually for, I think, the next seven years, which sort of gets rid of any benefit of, look, of taking the winter fee. Um, so we end up paying a lot more at the end of those seven years anyways. <clears throat> I think we need to come up with a better way to try and decrease our water bills overall. Um, I've lived in a number of cities in the area, and my sewage fee here is a lot higher than in any of those other cities. So um, that's it. Thank you. Anyone else under communications from citizens? If not, I'll close that portion and go on to reports from city administration. Mr. Vanderpool, anything for tonight? Mayor, I can respond uh, quickly to a couple of comments. First, there was a, um, a concern that the uh, amendments for the vaccination center, the budget amendment, were on consent. Uh, let me just remind uh, audience members that the full consent backup material is provided. Even though an item's on consent, that doesn't mean any less material is provided. Uh, so any resident can go to any agenda item, whether it's on consent or not, and see the complete full backup of that agenda item. Um, with respect to the vaccination center, we have uh, discussed uh, the issues that are on consent uh, pretty extensively over the past couple of months, including the professional service agreements that are required to run the vaccination center uh, related costs and also the fact that uh, the, the costs will be uh, reimbursable uh, through Macomb, Macomb County and also uh, FEMA. So uh, obviously, uh, this is a very prudent investment considering uh, the life safety element of it. And uh, we look forward to uh, continuing the operations in a very cost effective way, uh, which is certainly uh, required by FEMA and, and getting fully reimbursed for the cost. Um, there was some uh, question about uh, rear yard chickens. Uh, some may recall we did talk about this at our strategic planning session and the consensus was 
uh, to ask a question in the community survey, which was approved by the city council tonight, the the contract to conduct the, the statistically valid community uh, survey. We do those every five years or so, and this is a time to do it again. And the city council desired that we uh, include a question about the community's feelings of uh, allowing uh, rear yard chickens. Uh, so we'll be working a question into the community survey on that particular topic. Uh, with respect to water and sewer bills, uh, the good news is that uh, we are solving the uh, sewer part of the bill uh, that's caused some consternation in the community, uh, whereby irrigation use, uh, I should say sewer, um, uh, billing is tied to irrigation use, uh, which is very notable in the summer months. So we're moving to a winter consumption uh, methodology for sewer. So you will not be penalized then uh, with applicable sewer charges that are related to irrigation in the summer months, whether it be water in your yard, filling a pool, or the like. So this will be of a significant benefit uh, to the speaker that spoke tonight and uh, thousands of other uh, individuals across, uh, homeowners across the city. So it's good news. There's more to come on that topic during uh, the budget hearings. Also, uh, with respect to the election official compensation commission, uh, which um, it, it is, is autonomous from uh, interaction from the, the city council, the city clerk is a liaison to that commission and uh, she certainly could uh, respond and provide an overview of the commission's decision and um, um, where that stands. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vanderpool. Mr. Kashupski, anything? Nothing tonight, Mayor, thank you. Okay, I'll open it up to council. Any new business reports? Anything for tonight? Mayor Taylor? Mrs. Sorowski. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. So I, I um, just have a couple of comments and I did want to uh, congratulate the recipients of all the awards tonight. It is certainly well deserved and it um, was very evident with Mr. Vanderpool's very, quite eloquent descriptions of everything that we've gone through in this city in this past year. And everyone in the world has gone through very similar things, but we have accomplished so much, which is amazing. And it, we ha Mr. Vanderpool said that we've prevailed but I want to say we have not just prevailed, we have excelled. We have continued to improve the lives that we could and, and the methods being different, but still being effective. And I am very proud of our city for doing that. I'm very proud of being a small part of that because we have come through something very unprecedented, obviously. No, none of us have before and probably never will again go through something like this, hopefully. Um, and so I want to congratulate the city for being the recipient of the city department. Also, just very quickly, vaccinations are, we are, I'm very, very honored and proud again to be a part of the vaccination center. Please, residents, go out, get on the city, uh, excuse me, the county website and get yourself signed up. It is as a nurse and I have citizens, I have, I have, um, Cl clinicians that I work with, staff that I work with on a daily basis that are still getting sick. Patients are still getting sick. This is not something to mess with as we probably have, most of us have understood that. So please get out and get vaccinated. I will be there on Saturday if anybody wants to come and get a shot from me. I will be happy to give it. And um, I'll be donating, of course, my time. Anytime we, anything that we can, then can donate, I'm very happy to do so. So hope to see you on Saturday and thank you again. Thank you, Mrs. Sorowski. Council, anyone else? Mrs. Zarko. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. Um, you know, I had a, a chance to volunteer at the senior center for at the first vaccination center that opened in the city. And I have to say that it certainly is a success. I can't um, say enough to the fire department and the paramedics that have been there and have coordinated this effort. Um, it's certainly, it's a uh, task. We actually don't make up the list ourselves. Every list and every name comes from the county. So um, one of the problems now we find is that people are on so many different lists that they might get their vaccine um, prior to the appointment that they had at the senior center. So we're finding that there's some people that aren't showing up. So 
I would encourage you to go to the county website. The secret is to do it in the middle of the night. So if you're up at midnight, two, three, five o'clock, go in there and uh, people are making two and three appointments at a time for their family. So that's the secret to get into the website if you're really interested. Um, but I too am, I can't thank our employees enough for everything that they've done this, you know, this year. Uh, it's it's amazing um, with all the obstacles that were in place, we were able to take on every task that was presented. Um, certainly we all work together and I have to agree that's why it was as a successful a year as it was despite all of those obstacles. So again, I wanna thank all of the employees that came together, administrators, council. We all worked together to make sure that the job got done. And again, I encourage you to get your vaccine. And if you are leery about one vaccine or another, there are people that, you know, um, here in the city that will help you understand that. Um, if you have an appointment at the senior center, they take the time to explain the process, the difference between the vaccines. And um, it, it's an educational project or, or, or process, and, but don't delay. Um, because the sooner that we all get vaccinated, everything we talked about doing this summer and into December um, can be accomplished. So I think that um, it's a goal that we need to reach um, is to get as many people vaccinated as possible. So please, please make your appointment, get your vaccination. Try, if it's not the county that you wanna go through, go through the, uh, the, um, the, the CVS or the Walgreens, or, but do it. Um, call your doctor's office if you need more information on vaccines, but get the vaccine, it's that important. Nothing further. Thank you, Ms. Zarko. Mr. Radke. I have to echo my comments, colleagues. Vaccination is the key to getting life back to normal. We rolled out a, set, a series of activities earlier today at a press conference called uh, Breakout Last, you know, uh, for the summer, because I know that my family is, is kind of sick of being in our house. I think everyone in Sterling Heights is too. But the key is case rates to go down and us being able to at least get out in the outdoors and assemble. And right now, if you're looking at the, the indicators that we receive as city council people, they're not good. Henry Ford Macomb is at 99% capacity for ICU for COVID. It's gonna get worse a little bit here before it gets better, but the key to it getting better is getting vaccinated. I know the entire city council, we've done everything in our power to bring vaccines to you, but you have to sign up. You have to go and get the vaccine. Don't just do it for you, do it for your family, do it for your neighbors. You know, I lost three neighbors to COVID uh, on my block. You know, and it's, it, I think about that all the time and we have to do better so that our neighbors and everyone else will make it through because well, I'm young and healthy, my dad isn't, and my, my neighbors aren't, and other people aren't, and that's why we're getting vaccinated, not, not for me, but for them. So I urge everyone to, uh, to get vaccinated. It's the only way we're going to beat this and uh, hopefully come out the other side. Uh, this, it's the number one thing. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Schmidt. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. Um, just to continue on this subject, um, I have to say that um, uh, Mr. Radke referred to Henry Ford Macomb uh, Troy Beaumont, uh, the Beaumont system is, uh, their numbers are exploding. My daughter is a patient care tech at Ascension Macomb. They now have redesignated um, regular med, med surge floors to COVID only floors. Um, this is reverting back to how it was in November, December, January. Um, I can't thank our healthcare workers enough. I see what she comes home with and, and uh, what she has seen. And it's just a snapshot of what's, what everyone else, all those frontline workers and first responders, healthcare workers, uh, they have my total and utmost respect for everything that they are doing for every patient that has come down with this um, virus. And I, uh, from the bottom of my heart, um, beg you to please, please consider getting the vaccine. I know there's a lot of, you know, skeptical, you know, um, opinions out there. I respect that you have a different opinion than me, but let's just keep everyone healthy and safe. That's all, that's all I want. That's my Christmas list. And um, the more people that we get vaccinated, the more that will come true. 
So I implore you, as my colleagues have said, please, we are making it available. Please, please, please do whatever you can to get your, your vaccine and your family vaccinated as well. It's now opened up to um, teenagers 16 and above. So let's get these kids back in school. I work in the schools. I see what's going on there, in, and it's very sad. It's very sad. I want the kids back in, in school next year, full time, full classes, not two to nine kids a class. Um, let's do what we can. We can do this, Sterling Heights. I know we can. I have nothing further. Thank you, Mrs. Schmidt. Mrs. Koski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to also, again, say thank you to all the city employees that received recognition tonight. Whether it was years of service, uh, your duties as a part-time or full-time employee, we've been doing this for 20 years now, recognizing employees and saying thank you. It's a good feeling, and I always enjoy this program because to see 20, 25, 30 years of service, it shows that we have some really dedicated employees. So again, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing this photo enlarged and put up in the lobby here at the center to see pictures of all the employees that are truly dedicated to the service of our residents. And again, I echo my colleagues. We have a new center, I believe, down at 14 Mile and Ryan that just opened for vaccinations. So again, I also encourage you, go on the website for the county, find a location that's close to you, call the drugstores, call your doctors, and find a place to get a vaccination because there's many out there, and I'm sure that you'll be able to find one in no time at all. Get your vaccination so we can get back to some kind of a normal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Koski. Mr. Yanez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do want to say uh, congratulations to every city employee um, who won the award tonight. I noticed that uh, some of the people I got hired with uh, got a 25 year uh, recognition. So um, um, this is 25 years ago, I got hired with the city and um, Mrs. Koski is absolutely right. I mean, people are dedicated here. And we saw the dedication, not just from the uh, employees that won awards, but from every single employee that worked here uh, under incredibly difficult circumstances, um, not only in, in their, their professional life here for the city of Sterling Heights, but in their personal lives as well. And so I wanna thank each and every single employee, volunteer, uh, everybody who's connected with the city of Sterling Heights uh, for keeping the city uh, up and running. And they did a fantastic job and the um, award is well deserved. Um, I also uh, got a message from the city manager today about the street sweepers are out. And I'd like to through the chair and ask uh, the city manager, do we have a um, sort of like the snow plows? Do we know where the sweepers are going, going to go? Do they have a route? Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Yanez, yes, we, we do have a route, uh, but it's tough to give specific dates or times when they're gonna be by a home. Uh, but I can look into with the public works director, you know, perhaps uh, promoting uh, within a day or two, you know, sort of uh, when the street sweeper might be in a given area. Uh, there might be a way to better promote that. Um, and, and what's most difficult too, although it's easier now during COVID and many people still working at home, uh, the, sh the street sweepers come by during the day. So those who are not home uh, often won't see the street sweepers, but they do come by. They cover every area of the community at least four times a year. Yeah, I, I just think it's uh, important for people to be aware that they're out and about and uh, think about parking your car in the, in the driveway instead of on the street until you know the street sweeper has gone by so they can do their job and keep our city clean. And um, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yannis, and thank you to the council for the uh, comments. I won't repeat them regarding the vaccine, uh, but I do agree um, it is of utmost importance. Um, just a couple other things. Uh, Mr. Radke mentioned it, we did have a little event before the city council tonight where we uh, unveiled the summer lineup of events, uh, summer and beyond. 
what we're branding as the break free blast. And I know a lot of people feel like they've been cooped up for the last year and are looking for the city. Um, I can remember going back to around this, probably around this time last year, or maybe even later when we started announcing cancellations of things, just the, how upsetting it was for me personally, I know for our council and our employees, um, our entire Sterling Heights community took it uh, as, a, as a big blow when we had to cancel Sterling Fest, cancel the Music in the Park series, uh, cancel Sterling Frights, cancel, go at least go virtual for uh, Sterling Christmas. So I'm really excited that we were able tonight to announce that uh, the, the Music in the Park series is coming back this year, that we're going to be able to pair that with our Thursday nights at Dodge Park where we have uh, patios and pints over at the Upton House, uh, and of course the Dodge Park Farmers Market uh, with food trucks and um, and all that. And so I'm really excited about that coming back this this summer, uh, as well as uh, the cultural exchange, which normally would be in this room we're in right now, uh, but for obvious reasons that couldn't happen this March. So that's going to be moved outdoors, uh, and uh, it's going to enjoy the warm summer weather under the Farmer's Market Pavilion, and we're going to be able to highlight the number of diverse communities that we have here in the city of Sterling Heights. Uh, the Memorial Day Parade uh, is not going to necessarily be a parade, but uh, we are going to have an opportunity to uh, have a ceremony to honor our veterans um, and to honor those particularly uh, who lost their lives defending our country um, and so I'll be excited to participate in that again and honor those uh, members of our community. Um, and, and then of course, uh, Sterling Fest is the big one, uh, which this year is going to be temporarily rebranded Oktoberfest um, and possibly will morph into something more permanent. Uh, but Sterling Fest will come back next year, we hope. Uh, but hey, why not have an Oktoberfest too? Um, so we're, we're, we're really excited and, and I'm just proud of the work that our city administration, our Parks and Recreation Department, our Community Relations Department particularly, uh, and, and all of our different departments did to bring this back, uh, bring these events back. Because I know how many people out there uh, really enjoy, just love being at our parks, love um, enjoying the amenities that we have. And so we're excited to bring them back. And, and although they're going to look a little bit different this year still, um, I think uh, I know I, for one, will be really excited to get out there and be, be a part of it. So uh, one other thing I want to mention is that uh, one thing, another casualty of the pandemic last year was our budget hearings. Uh, things were really in flux last year at, around this time. We had uh, you know, no idea where our budget was going to end up. Um, and, and we took almost all the way till July 1st to pass a budget. This year we're back on our normal schedule. We're going to be having budget hearings a week from today and I guess three weeks from today. Um, so we are going to be uh, having our budget hearings here, uh, I believe six o'clock on uh, the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month, and then we'll pass a budget at the first meeting in May. Um, so I encourage you to uh, come out to our budget hearings if you're curious or interested um, about what's going on with our budget. This is a great opportunity to uh, try to understand it better and have your voice heard. So uh, with that, uh, I don't have anything else except for to say one more time, congratulations, and not just congratulations, but thank you from the bottom of our heart to every one of our uh, over 450 full-time and, and many more part-time employees uh, that made the city of Sterling Heights a great city to live, work, and recreate in uh, during this most unprecedented year. So with that, Council, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.